Okay guys, here we go. This is uh, Shooter's Pool. Now we made a video showing you um, basically how the offline works in the game. This is the online uh, side of it. Now again, before I go any further, let's just explain that everything that you see here is subject to change. It is public beta, so there's a fair chance that the information that you're going to see here is probably going to be what it may well be when it goes live, although don't take my word for that. So let's look around the page here. Um, what we have is uh, my profile page. Uh, we have my, pro uh, my profile page tab at the top, and we've got um, a view of the overview of my profile. This modality thing, uh, I don't know, I'm not sure of the wording of that, but that basically means what games you've predominantly played that make up your uh, statistics. So most of the time I've played pool, I've played a bit of black ball, and I think I've played some snooker. And then it shows you your results in your last matches, uh, how you've actually gone, and also your win-loss uh, percentage. Um, if we then look at the statistics, you have a drop-down window here that will show the games you've played, the, the game formats you've played, 9-ball, straight pool, 10-ball, snooker and black ball. There are other games still available, ones that I haven't played yet. Um, you'll again get your statistics here, your overall rating here, and then this sort of pie chart thing showing you uh, various other bits of information games won, match stats, that sort of stuff, pocketed balls, etc, etc, and then all your other statistics down here, let me just get rid of that, um, and that's a nine ball only, so if I use a drop down and I go to say snooker, uh, then you'll get a, another rating, your individual rating for snooker, and so on and so forth with different games. Um, you then look at your, uh, you can also obviously then compare your statistics in snooker with any other player, you you can type in the name of the player in there and find out how you rate against them or how your results have gone against them in a particular game. If we then go to the matches history, this will show you all the matches that you've played um, against who and what the score was and what game it was and what date it was. And it'll also, if you actually click the little um, magnifying glass, it'll break down the statistics for that match. Um, I don't even remember what this was. Was it snooker? Um, no, it was straight pool. And that's incorrect anyway, because that's a game where Geiger had to quit. He had to leave. But your statistics show that I won that match. Then it shows your balls pocketed and all the sort of stuff you'd normally expect to see. And it also gives you the rules you were playing by, the table set up, um, and what cloth you were using, the ball set that you were using, and the venue that you were in. And that will do that for every match that you have in your uh, statistics. Let's just go back out of that. Um, we will go down to the uh, Q case. Oh no, sorry. Why? Well, we'll go there to the Q case rather than doing it there. This shows you uh, the cues that I have bought and I have in my profile. I have a break queue, um, and as you see, if I scroll up and down, I need to keep my mouse over here. If I scroll up and down, I can change the order of the cues uh, in each uh, set there. So I've got the break queue, the jump queue, and I should have a playing queue. Hang on a minute. That's the one. That's the uh, playing queue. So I've got a play queue, a jump queue, and a break queue uh, in that profile. There's another slot down the bottom where you can put another queue, and you just click the little box to enable it, which is quite quite a good setup there. So then uh, we'll go to items. Now, in this section, I believe this is... Um, I th I'm assuming this is items that I have bought. Um... Well, that can't be the case because you're given a house queue anyway. These are house queues. Uh, you've got a snooker house queue. So those three are standard. So without you buying a queue in the game, if you were going to play pool, you'll be given a standard house queue. And likewise with snooker, 
and also uh, if you're going to play one cushion or three cushion or something like that you'll be given a house cue to play it what i have here is the cues that you saw in my case i've got the break cue this impact i've got the jump cue that one and then that's the master cue i bought my own snooker cue and then there is the pull cue the shooter's pull uh, s pro dash four so those are items that i have bought there if i go to shafts we'll see that again you have a standard uh, shaft that you're given when you play the game unless you buy one which i bought that one and then if i go to tables uh, these are all the tables that i have bought um i've got uh i think well in amongst that there are standard tables that you're given i didn't buy the seven foot black one uh, the nine foot black I don't think about that either or the six foot brown um, but the uh, snooker uh, snooker table is uh, the default one as well there and then all of these ones uh, you have the black ball table which again is a house table that you're given and then that table there I bought the shooters pool Chinese classic I believe I think I bought that one and also the supreme royal 10 foot table that's a house cue because you're given that to play caroms uh, one cushion or three cushion this one i definitely bought the shooter's pool uh, glossy white nine foot table and finally <coughs> excuse me finally the shooter's pool uh, 12 foot snooker table i bought that one uh, if we go to cloths um, that's a standard uh, shooter's pool snooker one although it's shown you texture of the cloth it's not showing you the colors um, you've then got the shooter's pool cheetah which is the blue cloth uh, should you choose it to be blue you can buy it in multitudes of colors um, that's for the nine foot pool table then you've got the rhino which is another pool table uh, cloth and the rapid which i think is uh, another one uh, if we go to ball sets um, i think in the ball sets as far as uh, uh, pool goes I bought the Pro Tour TV set of balls. You're given the Carom set of balls there. You've got the standard uh, set of pool balls there. And also you have the standard black ball set of balls. And finally you have the standard snooker balls, uh, which are, as, as you would look, would be the traditional ones with the, the colors and the reds. There is a different set, but they've actually got them numbered. So the yellow is two, three for the green, four, and so on. And then finally, we go to venues. We have, when you start the game, without buying anything, you're given the modern house as the sort of standard room that you will play in. This is one that I bought, the uh, Shooter's Pool Challenge Arena. Uh, I find that the lighting in that one is better, so I purchased that one so that is all the items that you have uh, either given to you by default or items that you have purchased and they're all shown under that tab there under items if we go over to purchase history that will show you what i have bought and it shows you all the items the dates and then if you click on uh, the little magnifying glass it'll break down to show you what i bought which was the uh, the last thing i think was the balls that i bought so if we come out of there and we look at the what else can we look at well that's basically all the items there you've got a friends list uh, you've got messages if somebody sent you a private message um, you can go and edit your account change your photograph all that sort of stuff and then you can go to the forum if you click on that it'll take you to the shooters pool forum and the usual information about updates and stuff like that are there for for the game um at the moment that's predominantly just beta testing information it's there and then if you go to the store now if we go to the store and go to the catalog you can see you have drop down menus here at the top uh, you have the uh, categories broken down so you can narrow down the page that you're actually looking at so for example if i go to pull then it's going to show you all the pool tables that are available and plus it will show you the ones that you already own or are given by default so we have that one there this one here which is an eight foot um the nine foot black and they're showing that i'm 
uh, I own those, and then the other ones are all up for purchase. And you have what ones? Uh, that's a seven foot brown. Uh, there's an eight foot brown which I've got, and then there is another nine foot uh, brown table. And now, of course, these tables, the nine foot ones, are all the same size, but it's the actual difference in the actual woodwork and the legs and everything and the finish that uh, makes them different. And then you've got a Jaguar seven foot brown, which is like a little pub table or a bar table, as the American guys would call it, and a shooter's pool competition seven foot table. So that's those ones. If I go to um, the snooker, I think that narrows down to the two tables, the standard one you're given and then the one I bought. And then if we go to uh, British pool, then it narrows down to those actual pool tables. There's four of them, the different uh, pub tables. Um, again, you're given a default one, so I haven't bought another one of those. So there's a six-foot one, which is the smallest one, uh, in fact, there's two of those and two seven-foot tables there as well. And finally, Chinese pool, then that's the one I bought, which is a nine-foot. Now, the, I don't know much about Chinese eight ball, but what I do know is that it seems to be that they play it on like a nine-foot size snooker table because the pockets on it are tight and the pockets are not uh, sharp-edged like they are on a nine-foot table. They've got the curved... Um, rails, the curved pockets um, so they're quite a tight table they're quite good to play on though um, so you have two of those and finally you've got the carom table and again there's a default one that you're given the 10 foot table and which is called the Supreme Royal and then there's an Emperor and looking at the two of those um, there doesn't seem to be any difference in the spec of them at all um, but again, the difference is the finish, the actual wood trim and the corner pocket, uh, not the corner pockets, there are no pockets on it, but the, the trim around the table is the difference in the legs, of course, and part of the design. Right, so that narrows that down. And then, of course, you've got the item types here. Now, if we go to the cues and the shafts, that shows you what's available in the store. Um, now, if we narrow that down... I put that to shafts. Right, you've got the different shafts that are available. The house one that you've given, and then the ones that you've been... No, sorry, that's the one I bought, I think. Or is that the standard one? I'm getting myself... No, that's carom, because I haven't bought any carom ones. So these are the three different uh, shafts available for the carom cues. And we go down to uh, cloths. You've got the carom cloths there as well. And that one, and, and you can keep going and, and individually break it down. You've got the ball sets. Uh, there are four different ball sets available for caroms. Uh, slightly different colour combinations. You'll have ones that uh, are just two whites. Well, one with a spot on it, probably. A different coloured uh, third ball. And then you've got the one here with the yellow cue ball, the white cue ball, both with spots on them. And the red, and then that just looks fairly plain. A yellow and a white probably just a single spot on them and finally well that's cue balls will be none of those available uh, locations are the same now the locations in the game uh, the ones that you can play in or you can buy as I said earlier the default one the modern one you've got the country house the money billiards tavern the palace um, you have the salon and shooters pool challenge arena which is the one I purchased so there are six different venues. There's actually more than six available. Uh, the one, if you've seen any pictures of Shooter's Pool, you'll see that they've got like a TV arena. And the TV arena one, you will uh, only, see, as far as I'm aware, and I've led to believe, you'll only see it online when you're playing in tournaments. So the tournaments will be played in, in either one or two uh, separate arenas uh, online. Um, but you don't have them in your your uh, itinerary. You, you can't buy them at the moment. You can't anyway. Um, and now, if we go to um, subscription plans, this is quite um, an important feature. Again, this information here can be uh, correct at the time that I'm showing you it. Um, the information that you see here is all subject to change. At the moment, you're looking at um, 
uh, one day subscription is available for one euro fifty. Now a euro is slightly less than a pound, as far as I know. It can't be an awful lot different, but so roughly you're talking about a dollar fifty. Let's say it won't be that much different. Uh, um, you can pay that either in cash or a credit card, I would imagine, or in virtual coin which would be in your own account. Now, I've got 850 virtual coins left in my account. You can subscribe for a month for 250, 500 virtual coins. Uh, you've got a three-month subscription, uh, a six-month subscription, and a 12-month subscription, which is 12 euros, which is probably about 10 pounds, something like that. Um, if I've got that right, but it won't be much off it. I mean, it's probably, I would guess, between 10 and, what, $15 max, roughly, a year. So that is your um, subscription plans. Now, if I go down to virtual money, on here, again, the way it's set up, you can add uh, 5 euros worth or 500 virtual coins to your account. Uh, 9 euros will give you a thousand virtual coins, 22 euros will give you two and a half thousand, 40 will give you 5,000 uh, virtual coin, and finally 75 euros will give you 10,000. Now of course the virtual coin is what you use to play in tournaments. Uh, when you go to a tournament, which we will go and have a quick look at, if we go to join a match, um, you can see that there is one game up at the moment. Now, the only thing that I don't like about this is, is you can't see who is in the room. Um, if I click on that cross there, that would allow me to join the room. Um, I mean, it's called Geiger's game, so Geiger, we assume, is in that room and he's playing somebody else, but we don't know who it is. Um, but if I clicked on the plus button there, I would join the room and I'd be joining as a player. So that would allow me to join the queue and play whoever uh, wins that match. If I click the little sort of eye symbol, that allows me to join the room as a spectator and I won't be in the queue to play. So that list would go down if there were more uh, rooms available. So that's a regular match. So these guys are playing nine ball. They might be playing a race to five in a match. Um, if we go to King of the Table, uh, there's none up there at the moment, but uh, King of the Table is a winner stays on table, whatever game it might be, it might be 9 ball, it might be 8 ball, 10 ball, could be snooker. It's all just over one frame or one rack, and if you win that frame or that rack, you will stay at the table and the next person in line will join you to play the next frame or rack. And lastly, we have tournaments. Now, there's a list of tournaments here. Um, this, for example, at the top is a, a snooker uh, tournament. Uh, there's been a thousand virtual coin added to the pot. Um, it costs you a thousand virtual coins to enter the tournament. And it is a sit and go tournament. Now, that means that that tournament is live and will basically remain live until four people have signed up to the tournament. And it tells you there the start time will be when it is full. So that will remain there until there's four people join it and then the tournament will go underway. If I um, click on the cross there, that would allow me to uh, sign up for the tournament. Or it should do anyway. So I'll click on the name of the tournament. Um, signed up players, it'll show you 9ball.com, that's me. And it then shows you all the information about the, the tournament. So you get the rules, it's snooker, it's over one game. There's going to be a lag to decide who breaks. Uh, it is alternate breaking snooker anyway. It's in the open arena, which is, as I say, that's one of the arenas that we don't have uh, by default and we can't buy it at the moment. Uh, it's on the Shooter's Pool Stella 12-foot golden table, um, Shooter's Pool snooker cloth. And the ball set is a standard set of balls, and the cue ball is the same. And then there's the prizes that are available. So it's a winner takes all. Um, you get 160 points to your overall rating, um, and you get 1360 
uh, virtual coin to your account should you win it. And down below here, when the tournament does get underway, the event bracket would show and it would show you who you're playing and all that sort of information. So, I'm in that tournament. When you've clicked on the tournament information page here, you have an option up here to click withdraw and that will remove me from that tournament. So if I hit refresh and uh, if I go back to, now where was I? Uh, go back that way. Yeah, well, right, the, a list of tournaments that were available. Um, and up here it shows you the ones that are scheduled, uh, ones that are waiting on registration, or tournaments that are underway. And it will also show you tournaments that have finished, and they're all categorised by colour, uh, little markers that tell you that information there. Now, this is the thing about uh, Shooter's Pool. Uh, one of the major things that's different for anybody who may well have played online in Virtual Pool 4. When you come to uh, Shooter's Pool, uh, you will have those default tables, uh, that default room, the default house queues for those games you will play. Now, every other item uh, that is available in Shooter's Pool uh, can be bought individually from the store. And as I said there, that is by buying each item individually. Now, there's a good thing about this, and I'll give you an example. Let's look at um, let's look at the pool, and we'll narrow it down to the pool. Now, there's two pages of the pool tables. Now, that one there's one I bought. This is this nine foot um, sort of silver white table. It's quite a cool looking table. Now, I bought that table the other day there, and if I were to play um, an online friend, and I ch let's say I challenged him to a match and I, we're going to play a race to five or something, if I set the room up, uh, I'll just show you what we can do. If I go to play and create a match, so you can join the match, which is the one that I said that we did there, and we can see the room was there. If I click create a match, right, uh, we've got the name of the room, which would be my own game. It will default to nineball.com's game unless you type something else in there. Uh, you then have a drop down that shows you your type of match you're going to play. And you've got the maximum allowed players in the room. So you've got a little up and down arrow, which is a bit small, I have to say. They maybe want to increase that a wee bit. Um, and bear in mind, I've got my magnification up to 120, so it looks even smaller. Um, now, if I put it down to two, that means there's just going to be the two of us playing in the room. And if we want to make it private, I would type in a password there. So that means nobody else could enter the room. Now, that's us put the information for the room name. Down at the bottom, you have a summary at the moment, which is showing the wrong information because I haven't chosen it yet. So if we go to rules, we're going to play nine ball, for example. And we're then going to use the little up down arrows. Now here's another good thing um, in here. You've got the choice of games you're going to play. The games can be, I believe, up to 100 odd or even more. I haven't even scrolled up high enough to find out, but it doesn't matter. Let's say we're going to play a race to five, and that is going to be one set. Let's say, though, we're going to play um, over three sets. So that's a race to five in each set, and it's a race to three to win the match in sets. We've got the break policy. Now the break policy can be, you can choose player 1 to break, player 2 to break, you can lag for break, you can have a random break, uh, or you can whoever is the lowest rated or the highest rated to break off. So normally um, you would have the lag for break. And then the break policy is either alternate breaks, the loser breaks, or winner breaks. So normally you would have winner breaks. A standard nine ball game would be like that. And then if you go over here to the right, there's a little tab where it says specific rule options. So over here for nine ball, you've got um, the nine ball in a foot spot. Now this, uh, or you've got the one ball in a foot spot. Now what that means is, is that basically means that wherever the, the actual diamond of the balls is going to be placed, you're either going to bring uh, the rack further up the table or it will remain where a standard break would be. And you do that by putting the one ball on the foot spot or the nine ball on the foot spot. If you put the nine ball on the foot spot, 
uh, you're going up the table, or well, away from you. Uh, it's a standard break, and if you put it in a, uh, the one ball on the foot spot, you're bringing it up the table. I think that's right. I might be wrong. Anyway, that's that's what it means. <laughs> uh, I maybe should have thought of that before I looked at that. Uh, you'll get break from the box. This is um, this is a rule that they had in. I don't know whether they've still got it, but they had it in the Moscone Cup, uh, which is the US versus uh, Europe in nine ball pool. And uh, break from the box means that when you're standing at the end of a nine foot or any any pool table, um, you have the diamonds along the rails. Now the diamond, if you stood in the middle of the table about to break, you've got two, a diamond to the left of you and a diamond to the right of you. And from that diamond up to the head string, uh, the kitchen line, uh, if you marked a line from that rail to the kitchen line, that would be the box and the cue ball can't be moved outside that box to break off. That is to say, you can't move the cue ball to the rail to break from the rail. Uh, you've then got a choice of call shot. Well, normally nine nine ball isn't call shot, and then you've got a uh, money ball and a break win. So if you leave that checked, you can have a nine ball golden break, um, and then you've got a three points break rule. Now somebody's going to have to explain that to me because I'm totally confused with that one. So I'll worry about that when we come to it. Um, and then you've got the turn timer. You've got the uh, timer seconds which you can have the shot clock set to whatever it is let's set it to 40 uh, available extensions let's set it to 2 and the extension is going to be 40 seconds now save extensions between turns so we'll do that and then you have um, the table you're going to play on so we've chosen the games and the amount of racks we're going to play how we're going to break etc go to table and then you've got a drop down to show the tables that you have in your itinerary uh, or tables that you've purchased that you can choose to play from. So I'm going to choose that glossy white one. Um, but let's say my opponent hasn't bought that glossy white one. If they've not bought that glossy white one, the good thing about uh, Shooter's Pool is, is that um, if they come into my room to play this match, they will be able to play on that table because I I bought it, and uh, we will choose the shooters pool cheetah cloth. Uh, we'll have the competition blue, or might, maybe even choose electric blue, and then you've got the table dirt. So that's uh, you know whether the table is new or whether it's going to be used. So I'm going to slide it down to you uh, to new, and then we have the ball set. So it's already on the TV set of balls. Now the TV set of balls has a white cue ball with the red spots on it and your four ball and your 12 ball instead of being a uh, purple are uh, pink. So you get the pink four and the pink 12. Um, if I use the drop down, I could choose the standard set of balls and that shows you the standard set and you see the difference. Go back to the pro tour. So again, these are balls I had to purchase. And again, my opponent will be able to play with those in this room that I'm going to make. And then, of course, you can choose the uh, newness of the balls as well. Uh, then you go to venue. And you've got the two venues. You have the default modern house one that, as I said earlier, you're given. And then we've got the challenge arena, which is the one I purchased. So that's this one. It's like a, it's like a private room in, say, a, a pool hall or in a bar. You maybe hire out or something like that. So it's quite a nice dark room, but it's got good lighting on the table. Um, and then you've got assistances. Now, again, for the time being, um, they have an option where you can have aiming lines for players ranked below amateur. So that will be an, a, an actual rookie player. You could check the box and allow them to use aiming lines. You can have... Uh, straight shooting for players ranked below professional, so you can check that box. But if you don't check any of them, then there are no assistances on for anybody in the game. Right, so in summary, down at the bottom, we can see that we created a nine ball game. It's a winner break. Uh, it's going to be lag for break. It's a race to three sets over five games each set. The table set up is shooter's pool, blah, 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 blah. And the ball set is the TV set, and the venue is the challenge arena. 
and if I click that there then my game will kick in and the game will start and that's basically how setting up a room is concerned um, if we then look at the support tab um, you've got the download button to download the latest version of the game you've got the contact tab to email the developers uh, you've got a frequently asked uh, questions page which is here and then it's broken down into other information um, like for example I'll show you this page uh, store and virtual products let's go to that and then it's uh, asking questions there and it'll give you answers there pretty much a standard FAQ page not a lot of uh, complications to that um, there's then other tabs here of course with the game rules if we go to game rules you've got individual games now at the moment you have three six nine games uh, in shooters pool that of course is subject to change uh, as other games may be requested by players and the developers may or may not uh, introduce them to the game but at the moment you've got nine different games um, these seem pretty much games that uh, would be fairly popular to play I think the Chinese 8 ball will be quite popular to play you'll get black ball for the UK players who like playing in the little bar tables and then of course straight pool, snooker, one pocket, ten ball and one in three cushions uh, billiards as well so that's a fairly sort of standard choice of games that would give a, a good reasonable choice for, for people's favourite games um, and then you've got the legal information here again in terms of use uh, I don't know what's uh, well your the sales conditions purpose um, information uh, your contract with us carrying out an order blah 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 it then goes into all the small print stuff I won't bore you with that uh, license agreement and cookies policy terms of use and then the contact uh, here so if you want to send a message to the developers you would type in your details there or whatever problem it is and hit submit so that's your support information there um, I think the idea of being able to buy what you want is probably one of the best selling points of the game um, apart from the fact the physics are pretty good there's there's quite a few things need tweaking um, within the game um, snooker for example at the moment needs a bit of work done on it in my opinion um, there's there's a bit too much um, deflection and stuff all of that feedback is going back to the developers and they're working backward and forward with the testers uh, to get things uh, adapted and adjusted um, there's a long way to go before this game should be released in my opinion because it's there's quite a number of bugs uh, that are uh, rearing their ugly head and need looking at so this game is from my opinion nowhere need near ready to be released yet it needs a lot more uh, work a lot more intensive testing um, having said that though there doesn't seem to be an awful lot of people on at this time of the day because they're probably at their work that's probably the main reason for that um, you can see there's a language uh, tab at the top you've got English and Spanish uh, the game as far as I understand has been developed by uh, two Spanish gentlemen I think they're brothers um, and uh, so you've got the two languages there I don't know whether they're going to develop it into multiple language support uh, that would obviously take a bit more work uh, you've then got your usual sort of social media stuff here at the top Google Plus uh, whatever the hell that one is uh, and uh, Twitter and Facebook I don't know what that is oh tell a lie I know what that is that's for um, the shooters pool um, YouTube uh, channel which you I hasten to add has got nothing on it I believe that the uh, chaps are going to be developing or uh, getting their promotional video set up at some point you may well find that on their shooters pool channel um, and I think that pretty much covers um, the online sort of side of things and what you will see on the shooters pool website uh, I keep going back over it it can change this isn't for definite the pricing structure can be totally different uh, the games available can be totally different 
um, it's all subject to change. So bear that in mind before you start saying, well, you said this, he said that, it's got that, well, what happened to this? You know, I don't want to hear any of that sort of stuff. So that's that summarises it all up. Oh, the last thing is the rankings. If we go to rankings, you've got general and tournament. Now, rankings in the tournament, that explains itself. That's for tournaments played. General is an overall rankings uh, thing. Now, at the moment, uh, we have, uh, well, Marcos uh, Sands, or is it Science? Uh, that's one of the developers, and uh, he happens to be, um, where are the, why is my name showing there twice? Now, I'm showing 10th there. Now, this is a bit confusing for me. I'm showing 10th there, but then I'm showing 29th there. That might be overall rankings. Let's go to filters. Billiard modality. And that is showing all. Now, for some strange reason, I'm showing 10th there. Uh, yet, yeah, I'm showing 29 up there. Somebody's going to have to explain that to me. My position, 29. Well, there, I, there, if I go to 29, I'm not there. Well, maybe that's a mistake. Again, I'll maybe find out uh, as to why that's saying this and this is showing that. It's a bit confusing. Um, and that shows you his last uh, results that he's played. So he's won his last two matches. See, even I'm confused with it at the moment because it's so new. But, you know, it'll become more familiar as uh, time goes by, no doubt. I'll get him to explain a few of these things. Um, in fact, if we go to the support page, it might even tell you on there or it might not. I don't think it does. Now, where's the rankings, general, tournament, the forum, and the store, and the support, and the download, and the contact, FAQ. Let's go to the playing guide. Online gaming. Game display, replay mode. That's all to do with it. Right, let's go to rankings. General ranking. It is generated from the rating of the players. Also indicates percentage of match with one, percentage of games won. Then you've got the tournament ranking. It is generated from the tournament points of the player. Also indicates the number of tournaments played and the ratio of points won per tournament. Uh, well, I think that explains that. General ranking and tournament ranking. I, I certainly haven't played in any tournaments so far. Uh, rating and tournament points. Shooters Pool has two types of ratings that affect the quality of the players. These are the rating and the tournament points. Rating is a value that values depending on the victories and defeats of a player. All players start with a 1500 rating. How does a rating work? That needs a bit of uh, editing in the wording. Rating increases when you win a game. If your opponent has a rating higher than yours, the rating will increase further. The rating decreases when you lose a game. If your opponent has less of a rating than you, the rating will decrease further. Ranking of the players on the rating, depending on the rating distinction. So you've got amateur, rookie, professional and world class. So if your rating is below 1200, you're an amateur. If you're 1200 to 1800, you're a rookie. And from 1800 to 2200, you're a professional and 2,200 and above, you're a world-class player. The tournament points are achieved by playing tournaments depending on blah, 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 blah. There's enough reading there, which uh, at some point you will find uh, on the whole system. Um, you've got the tournament ranking filter in the cells. This is the same thing I've just read. And then it tells you about the virtual products, the store, offline gaming, etc. Well, I think that's enough that we've covered at the moment. It'll just give you a general idea of what you will see uh, as and when you join Shooter's Pool online. And I hope you're a little bit the wiser as to what the setup is uh, and be prepared for it when it goes live, as and when it does at some point. And we will talk to you again soon, no doubt. Yeah, this is a little addendum to the uh, Shooters Pool Online video uh, that I'll, I forgot to really cover in more detail than I wanted to. So um, I'm doing this little follow-up. This is um, comparing pricing uh, for those of you who maybe uh, have played Virtual Pool Online. Um, and we're going to look at the queuing, uh, the queue, sorry, pricing. Um, what I've got on the left-hand side of the screen, I've just shrunk down the windows a bit here 
we have the most expensive queue currently available under the current pricing structure for Shooter's Pool. And that's showing at €4. Euros. So if we made that nice and even, we would say that is um, £4. Um, or you could say it's like $6 or something. Now, if you look at uh, Virtual Pool 4, over here we have the most expensive queue that's available in Virtual Pool 4. You have a queue there that's priced at V dollars Now, it's $10 dollars um for a thousand v dollars in virtual pool four so if you were to put seven thousand v dollars towards this queue it would effectively cost you 70 pounds in real money to buy that queue so you can see there is a vast difference in pricing structure for queue sticks and that's just for one queue and your next expensive is down to 4100 uh, which is £40, or just over £40, and down to £3,000, or £3,000, uh, uh, um, and then down to a 1000 odd. So the most expensive queue in Virtual Pool 4 is far more expensive in your pocket than what it would be in Shooter's Pool. Their next cheapest one, or the next most expensive one down the way is 375 in euros, which again, if we say that is um, four pounds and maybe seven dollars something uh, in uh, US money, you can see there's a, a fair difference in pricing structure here. Now, Maybe Virtual Pool 4 needs to look at the pricing structure a bit for some of these queues. However, as I say, Virtual Pool 4 is different um, when you register on for the full, you know, if you become a full-time player, a fully paid up registered player in Virtual Pool 4, you have all the rooms available for you. Um, you've got a choice of tablecloth colours that come with the game, whereas this game you're buying items all individually, but I think this is one thing that people would notice the biggest difference in is the pricing of the queues. Um, and as I say, maybe maybe there's a little bit of a review needed here on a pricing structure of the most expensive queues in particular. Um, and I mean, n not taking anything back, I mean, when you look at these in close up, uh, these queues are very nicely finished. Um, they're certainly um, been a lot of work put into them, no doubt about that. Uh, the nice sort of uh, reflective inlays and everything that's in them, you know, cool looking, but is it really worth £70 sterling to buy a queue? I don't know. Um, but that is one big difference in the pricing structure there. Um, and I just thought I would uh, add that as an addendum to the video.